When creating your Discord bots, it's very important that you have some form of database for persistent storage. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to sign up for mongodb.com so you can get a free database for your Discord bot. So head over to mongodb.com, a link can be found in the description down below. I'm then going to go over to try for free. You'll then be sent to a page similar to this one where you have to sign up for your account. I'm going to go ahead and enter in all my information. After verifying your email, it's going to ask you for a few different pieces of information. I just went ahead and entered in that I'm trying to learn MongoDB and that I'm going to create a Discord bot and that I'm going to be using JavaScript. I can then go ahead and click on finish. And then here we can select M0, which is the free tier. You're only going to get 512 megabytes of storage, but for most small bots, that's perfectly fine. Then you can scroll down and you can select the different cloud provider or the region. Some of them are going to be paid. So I would just select the default that you have here and then go ahead and click on create. So it's now provisioning your free Mongo database, but at this time, it's also gonna ask you to enter in a username and a password. So here, my username, I could just say Alex. For the password, I can click on auto-generate secure password, and then I can also click on copy, and then I can click on create user. Now that we have our password copied, you wanna go ahead and open up a notepad file and go ahead and paste in your password there. We're gonna come back to this later on. And now if you scroll down here, it says, where would you like to connect? You can select your local environment. And then for the IP access list, we want to enter in 0.0.0.0 forward slash zero. This will allow everything to access our database. And then I can go ahead and click on add entry. And then I can click on finish and close right here at the bottom. Here, we're going to hide the quick start guide because I'm going to walk you through everything. Of course, if you want to see the quick start guide, go ahead and uncheck this box and then click on go to databases. If this tutorial is helping you, then consider helping me by leaving a like. And if you want to see more tutorials like this one, then subscribe to the channel. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. So here we now have our database. We can go ahead and click on connect. We can click on the top option, MongoDB drivers. And then here we want to select Node.js version 4.1 or later. And this is gonna be our MongoDB URI right here. So this is basically the URL that we use to connect. Go ahead and copy this. Then within your .env file, add in a new line that says mongo underscore URI equals, and then paste this in. And then what you want to do is you want to go back to that notepad file, copy the password, and then paste it in where it says less than sign password greater than sign. Make sure you do remove the less than and greater than signs here. Otherwise, this will not work correctly. Then you can go ahead and save and close this file. Now we can click on close. We can go over to browse collections. And of course, we have no data here yet. And I do have a complete Mongo series that you can check out with a link in the description or in the pinned comments so you can learn more about how to use Mongo. But for now, let's create a very simple feature in our Discord bot to count how many messages a user has sent. So going back into Discord, I now want to go ahead and cancel the process right here. We're going to install a package called Mongoose, which basically makes it somewhat easier to use MongoDB within our Node.js projects. So I can say npm install Mongoose. And then while it's installing, I'm going to make a new file called message-count-schema.js. Now within here, we're going to import a couple of things from Mongoose. So I can say const empty object equals require. Here I can pass in Mongoose. And then what we're looking to import is going to be schema with a capital S, model, as well as models. So we have model without an S and then models with an S. Now I'm going to create our schema, which is basically our blueprint to describe how our data should be structured. So here I can say const message count schema equals a new schema with a capital S. And here I can pass in an object. And then we can describe exactly what information we're going to have. So for example, we can have underscore ID, which is our primary key. This is going to be the type of a string and required is going to be true. This is actually going to store the Discord user ID for each individual user. We could then have a message count property, which is going to be the type of number with a capital N and required is going to be true. So essentially for every single individual user, we're going to have a number associated with that and we can increase that number every single time they send a message. Now, of course we want to go ahead and export this. So I could say const name equals, and then this will be the actual name of our collection. In this case, I could say message dash counts. 
And then afterwards, I could say module.exports equals models index of name or model, which is a function call passing in name, the message count schema. Now, the reason why we're doing it this way is because whenever we call the model function right here, it's going to create a model behind the scenes that Mongoose knows about, and that model will be stored inside this models array right here. So we don't need to necessarily create a model every single time we want to export this. And this may not be a problem in smaller projects such as this one, but in larger projects where you might be importing the same schema multiple times, it could cause some issues. So we're going to go ahead and first check to see if it's already been created by accessing this array. Otherwise, we're simply just going to call this function here, which will then store it into the array. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and save this. We can close it. Let's go ahead and import this into our main file. So I can say const message count schema equals require. I can now require message count schema. Then of course I want to import mongoose. So const mongoose equals require passing in mongoose. Now within our client ready, go ahead and say mongoose dot connect passing in process dot env dot mongo underscore URI. Of course, if you named your environment variable in your .env file something different, then you would add that in here. But mine is just Mongo URI, so I'm going to add this in here. I can then add in an object, which is going to have keep alive be true. This way, we don't have to create new connections whenever we need them. We're just going to have one single connection that we'll use through our entire project. Now, after this ready event, I'm going to go ahead and listen for whenever a message is created. So client.on message create. Here, I'm going to get access to a message. For simplicity, I'm just going to add in a console log to print out message.author.id. And then I can go ahead and save this and I can run the bot with nodemon. Now within Discord, if I say test, for example, it's now going to show my user ID here. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and increase the number stored in our collection for the individual user ID. To do that, I can first make this function asynchronous, and then I'm going to remove the console log here. And then I can say await message count schema dot find one and update. Here I can pass in three different objects. The first of which is going to be where we have the actual user ID. So I could say underscore ID is going to be the same as message dot author dot ID. The second object is what we want to insert or update. So Find one and update is going to have an option to do something known as an upsert. So in the third object, I can add in upsert is true, basically meaning if this doesn't exist when it comes to this key value pair right here, then we're going to create this document in our database. But if it does exist, then we are going to actually update this in our database. So what do we want to insert? Well, we can say the same thing here. Underscore ID is message.author.id. And next we want to actually increase the message count. So I could say dollar sign ink, and then here we can add in an object. And this is going to store all the different keys that we want to actually increase and how much we want to increase them by. So for example, here we're going to have a message count. So we want to actually increase this by one. So I can now say message count is going to be one. And now I can save this. The bot restarts and going back into discord, I can now say test and then hello, and then world. So I'm just sending a couple different messages here. Going back into MongoDB, I can now click on refresh near the top right. We now have message counts. And here we have my user ID with a message count of three. I go back into Discord and I say test one more time. I can go back. I can click on apply right here. And now it's going to refresh it. And now we see four. So now our Mongo database is working and we're connected to it using our Discord bot. And again, if you want to learn more about MongoDB, you can click on the playlist linked in the description or in the pinned comment. Also, if you want to get $100 in free hosting credit to host your Discord bot, then go ahead and click on this video that you see here.